Hey guys, um, I had a uh, question in my channel about um, this Pivot Painter and specifically how to apply it to uh, effect like uh, like this here. Um, this is uh, Gregory Olive Oliveri Olive. I don't know how to say that. Um, Anyways, there's there's this kind of effect. Uh, it's done in Amplify Shader here, uh, but I believe it's using a similar technique uh, with the pivot baked in. Uh, I'm not sure how he says he does it here. Uh, pivot saved in the UV uh, UV2 uh, with the Blender plugin that I explained in a previous video. The pivots I think are baked into UV three and four. Uh, I've got. I'm going to show you the shader here. Um, so what I've done is, um, I've, I've kind of, got a similar type effect. I think, um, I can I can adjust the width here. Um, I've got the height, of, of the explosion here. Let's just, uh, let's bring it back a bit here. So this this is distance. So this is how far everything's traveling out. And then uh, I think this is height here. So I've got a couple of different sliders uh, to shape that. And then I've just got one that kind of runs through the whole thing. Um, I've also got uh, the position of this as well. So that looks, that looks kind of interesting just by itself. Um, just kind of changing the position <laughs> looks kind of odd so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the shader here this is what uh, I think this is what people find interesting here um, so this is the shader graph here and I'll just I'll just kind of talk you through it and explain what's going on here um, so how do I close this here Let's make it smaller. All right, so what's coming in here is the, I think, uh, okay, it is the UV2. Um, this has got the X and Y, and then uh, and then this one has the uh, the Z Z component. Now. In, in the baker, it bakes in two channels. It bakes uh, in the Pivot Painter Baker plugin for Blender. It bakes X, Y into red, green here, and then it, it bakes in Z in the red. And then in the green, I think it bakes in, uh, or, or not, or it's not red and green, but in the first channel, it's the Z. Second one is like a random value. So I've actually used this random value. Uh, I've, I've kind of used this to make make the animation a little bit more random uh, so I did bring that in and I believe this Z value here um, I don't believe it's actually doing anything I believe if I just put like uh, a zero in here uh, it would be literally unchanged like if I just if I delete that and just go like that uh, this is driving everything here uh, let me just go save and uh, let me see if that actually changed anything I don't believe it would have no uh, because I said earlier this I created this uh, this object on the Z plane um, so that would be useful if something wasn't on the Z plane so you could literally just drive it with with this here basically at this point uh, but uh, I'll leave it plugged in for now uh, because I will use that um, you know in maybe another project or something like that uh, this is something I had to do um, my blender mesh uh, to get to get this information to work correctly with my unity scale I actually had to uh, to scale this with a, a multiply here uh, just to make sure it was scaled correctly um, so what's happening basically um, this is this is an equation here that's um, it's uh, it's driving the X, Y, pushing thing, pushing them away. Uh, this is the the Z value is pushing it up. Uh, so this is like 
the distance out, and then this is the, I'm not sure, I, I did have this driven by time earlier, and then I, I made it a slider. Um, so that's the Z. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? There's my random value. Um, so we take we take this information that's come from baked baked into the vertices and then um if you come through here uh we're we're i've got a constraint on here um and this constraint is just it's it's basically it's a multiply that's determining kind of um the distance from the position and again the um the position is where um, where this is taking place. So it's just basically saying, hey, anything in this range, I'm going to affect it. Anything outside of this range, I'm not going to affect it. So it's a bit of a mask. It's like if I didn't have that mask on, it would just be affecting everything, um, which which I don't really want. I just want to affect a certain a certain bit of that. So it's just kind of a mask there. Mask might be a, be a better uh, term for that there. Constrained distance, yeah. Um, so that's that one. Uh, so that's just a bunch of multiplies happening here at the beginning. Uh, this calculate rotation is kind of interesting. What's happening here is we're taking um, the position of the impact, which is this uh, this value, like I said, wherever that impact's taking place, and then we're taking the um, the the. You could look at this x, y, and z here of the baked position, you could also look at it as a, um, a set of vectors, right? So it's like uh, z is up and then x, y, they're all basically kind of facing the same way. So what we do is we subtract uh, the position from the initial vector and then what we can do with that is we can um, we can take that and uh, we can get a cross product with just the up vector. Uh, and what that gives us is it gives us a vector that is, um, I guess, facing away uh, from, from, the, uh, from the point of, uh, you know, from wherever this action point is. And, and what's nice about that is when I rotate these, they're going to all rotate out from the center, uh, if that makes sense. Um, so I don't know if you can see that, but as they rotate, uh, they rotate away from the center. Um, and and then uh, there is, so this rotation, the reason it's calculated is it comes in later down here uh, in this rotate around axis. And uh, like if I if I increase this number quite a bit, so this is just a multiply in here. This is just the rotation amount. It's not the axis. It's how much it rotates. Let me save that. And now you'll see as I've, I've increased that 10 times. So as this explodes, you'll see that that'll rotate a lot more now. Um, so as, as these come out, they're all on an axis that is, I don't know how you'd say it, like perpendicular to the, the point. I don't know. I don't know what the correct terminology is for that. Anyways, so that's that bit. Um, now, how this works is we've done all these kind of, uh, you know, we've moved all of these these initial points around, and then what we're doing is we're taking um, we're taking the position of each vertex in object space. I noticed this other guy here. He's working in object space as well. Um, and uh, I've tried a little bit converting to normal space, but then I'd have to convert all these to normal space, or not normal space, uh, world space. Uh, so I I haven't figured that out yet. Um, I'm sure it's possible to, to do this all in world space, but right now it's just in object space. So you see if I, if I actually just move this mesh around it's it's just part of that mesh basically world might be but it might be more useful uh but uh, i just haven't got there yet and um so here i've got uh what i'm doing is i'm adding adding this um this offset that i've got in 
um, I'm adding it, and you'll see that this all of this uh, all of this information here, it's not part of these transformations. Like this is all like uh, I could basically go I could forget all of this info here. Well, not all of it, uh, but I could I could come basically. Uh, let's see here. What if I come? What if I? What if I forego the rotation here and just come just straight from here? Let's hit save that. And uh, I think this will still. This so the rotation's gone, but it'll still um, work on each uh, each individual piece and. Why is that? Because, oh, I do have some information coming in. Uh, the X, Y is coming in here. Okay. So I was, I was going to say, like, this isn't being affected by um, this data, but it is actually. Um, this is being this is being used to create a, uh, a vector 3, which is being multiplied in to with a random value to um, to the constrained distance and the Z explosion as well as uh, I believe also the well that's not actually being affected there so where is that oh it is it is coming through here to um, to this position here so it is being added this 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 is actually um, it has to be because each one of these is being acted on individually, so that gets added in for the translation. So this is the add that's translating everything, and then the tricky part is this rotator on axis. So like I said, I had to calculate the rotation here with the cross product, and then um, I had to do the rotation. So the trick here, and I think this is maybe what um, what the guy that was I was talking to on on uh, YouTube maybe he was getting tricked uh, oh I don't need to delete that one uh, where he's getting tripped up was um, I have found with this graph editor that it sometimes doesn't um, it doesn't allow, it doesn't allow you to reconnect after you've disconnected things like sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't so if anyone knows how to fix that let me know but what I need to do here is before I do my rotation, I actually need to subtract the initial, like I have to subtract this um, resting position. Um, and then what it'll do is it'll, if you look at this, if I subtract this, um, what it does is, uh, let's just save this. It should bring everything back to the center here. So f when it's back at the center, uh, then I can do a rotation. So this is where I do my rotation now in the center, and then I and then I add uh, this offset back in again. So I'm subtracting it out, and then I'm adding it back in again, if that makes sense. And then and then it's um, so the rotation is happening at the origin of the ob object. So that's basically the graph. There's nothing that, like I said, there's nothing that complex. Oh, rotate about around axis. This says custom function. It's not a custom function. This is actually a rotate about axis. That This is all this is. It's the exact same thing. Um, the reason I made it a custom function was that I looked this up online, and then I was uh, just to prove to you that this is actually exactly the same. Um, I can plug these all in and um, and it should be uh, it should be exactly the same here yeah let's see if that yeah see nothing changed it's this is exactly the same and so it says so if someone's looking at that and says oh that's a custom function it's not um, so this this just has a it's it's got the same name as one in Unreal, and I think it's similar, but um, it has an axis of rotation, 
it has a rotation amount and then it's got a um, basically the pivot point which is the input uh, so yeah um, again I'm you know I, I'm not an expert with with linear algebra um, but this would be this is kind of how I've how I've solved um, this uh, this idea here actually let's cancel that oh uh, how I've solved this uh, kind of explosion um, that's the width here's the explosion um, I've got a bit too much rotation on there now uh, yeah you can you can have a look at that and and uh, you know recreate that if you like and um, yeah I think this pivot painter has a lot of potential I know um, it's used uh, quite a bit in uh, I think in Fortnite they used it quite a bit I've seen I saw a paper uh, from Fortnite that they where they use this quite a bit in there and um, oh the the coloring here was just I was just doing a kind of a distance thing and it was giving me uh, you know a little bit more light on the things that were moving away um, but uh, yeah that's it basically and uh, yeah I hope you uh, you know let me know if you make something cool I guess uh, again this isn't my it's not my creation it's just uh, I think uh, credit to whoever made the pivot painter uh, I've forgotten the name for blender uh, and then that idea is obviously taken from, a, uh, I think this technique's been around for a while. So it's, that was borrowed from a plugin for Max. And uh, I know I've seen people create this same kind of thing with uh, baking this into uh, in Houdini as well. Um, but uh, having it in, in Blender and Unity, I think is a nice, uh, it's a, a nice way to do it, easy way to do it. All right, so uh, it looks a bit weird when you're moving it around. <laughs> so let's see if I can. Yeah, all right, I'll leave it there.